On today's program, Andrew Womack will inspire you to reach out and take the healing that is yours in Jesus Christ. God wants you well, and that's the gospel truth. Now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the gospel truth. Today is the beginning of my sixth and final week of teaching on God wants you well. And it's not the final week because I've exhausted the subject, but you know, I've laid a foundation. I've basically said the foundational things that I think need to be said about healing. And then the rest of it is just learning how to, how faith works. How do you appropriate these things? But the main thing I've been pounding over and over and over is that God wants you well. It's not just that God can make you well, but God wants you well. It's a part of His atonement. And this last week, I was really trying to get across that there are laws that govern how faith works, therefore how healing works. And most people just think that God, it's just kind of a person-by-person -person decision. He just makes it based on how He likes you or how holy you've been or how much you've prayed or fasted or whatever the criteria is. And I've been trying to share, and I use this verse out of Mark chapter 5, this instance of the woman with the issue of blood, how she came and touched Him. And when she touched him, virtue, power flowed out of him into this woman, and he didn't even know who she was. He didn't even know who it was that touched him. Now, some people, theologians, sit there and say, of course, God knows everything. Well, in his spirit, I believe that Jesus was God, but in his flesh, Luke 2, 52, says that he had to grow in wisdom and in stature. To grow in wisdom means he didn't just instantly know everything. He had to learn it. And even though he had a glory, I mean, a, a sinless physical body, it still had limitations. He just didn't intuitively know. He didn't have eyes in the back of his head. He didn't know who this woman was who had touched him. And the significance of that is it illustrates how that faith and power flows by laws. She touched him, and when she touched him in faith, the power of God flowed before Jesus had time to know who it was that touched him, before he had time to evaluate whether she was holy, whether she had done everything right. And this illustrates that in a sense, it is not God, it's not up to God whether or not you get healed. God has already provided it. He's put that power on the inside of you, and it's up to you to renew your mind and to make the connection that lets this power that's on the inside flow out. There are laws that govern how healing works. Boy, that's changed my life. And I believe this with all of my heart. There are reasons why people are sick, and there's reasons why people get well. And most people think, well, you just never know. No, we can know. And so I want to share with you what some of these laws are. And again, I said this on a broadcast last week. I could probably sit down and tell you up to a hundred laws that govern healing, things that are necessary or beneficial to use when you get healed. I'm only going to have time on the programs this week to share maybe four or five of them. I'm not going to tell you everything I know. And even that, I don't know everything that there is to know. I'm still discovering some of how faith works and how these things work. You know, um, I had one of my staff ask me in between the programs, well, what about people that just come to the Lord and are brand new and they haven't learned all of these things yet and yet they get healed? Now, see, if you were to follow what I'm saying and if it is tied to knowledge like we were using in 2 Peter chapter 1, that all things that pertain unto life and godliness come through the knowledge of Him, and if there are laws, and if we have to learn these laws, well, then what about people that just get born again and receive miraculous healings? And I believe, this is in a nutshell, but I believe that one of the reasons that they receive is because it doesn't take a huge amount of knowledge or a huge amount of faith to receive from God. The problem is all of this unbelief we have that counteracts our faith. If you've listened to these programs, I talked about that out of Matthew chapter 17. And you know what? When a person first gets born again, it's like God just gives them a clean slate. It's a do-over. It's brand new. And many times they just have a simple childlike faith that reaches out and receives these great miracles. It takes a lot of time and effort and religion to make most of us as dull 
and as bad of a conductor of God's power as what we are. I really believe that the biggest hindrance against healing is all of the wrong teaching and the religious teaching that is in an attempt to explain why God doesn't do things. And these things come in and they clog up the pipes and hinder the flow of God's power. But I believe that you don't have to be this spiritual giant, but you do need to be pure. And most people have been corrupted through religion with all of our religious stuff. And so you don't have to be a spiritual giant, but you do have to get rid of some of this junk that is hindering us. It just doesn't allow the power of God to flow through us. Here is this woman in the fifth chapter of the book of Mark who had this issue of blood 12 years. And look at this in verse 26. It says, And Anne had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Now, I'm going to read a little bit into this story. I don't believe that this is incorrect at all because it's verified in so many other places. But, you know, this woman for 12 years had suffered with this um, um, flow of blood, and it says that she had suffered many things of many physicians. I've actually read some commentaries on this. And you know what? I wouldn't even attempt to explain this over television, some of the treatments of this day. But they were weird. They were uh, superstitious at the very least and demonic at the worst. Some of the treatments and the things that they did, it was humiliating. It was terrible. The stuff that were the treatments of those days. I've read about this. And this woman had suffered many things of many physicians and spent all of her money. Did you know that most people would praise her for that? Even though now, here we are 2,000 years looking back at these treatments and thinking, this is barbaric. This is superstitious. How could this woman have done it? You know, if the Lord tarries... And if people are still here on the earth 2,000 years from now, they're going to look back at this 21st century at many of the things that you are doing and think, barbaric, how could people have done stuff like that? My point is that, see, this was the conventional wisdom of the day. It was the best that the doctors had at the day. And nobody, even though they were terrible things, such as, you know, today, Man, you go take chemotherapy and radiation and all of these things. And if you aren't sick from something else, you could die from the treatments. The treatments are terrible. I've actually known doctors that refuse the treatments that they do for other people because they see that the treatments are worse than the sickness. There are people today that are submitting themselves to this and spending all of their money. They've lost everything. And did you know what? The average person, the average Christian would come up and pat them on the back and, well, you're doing everything just right. Just keep on doing this. And they would encourage them, even though they're going through these barbaric treatments and terrible things are happening. You know, I'm not against doctors. I know somebody could take what I'm saying that way, but I'm not. I've got doctors that are friends. I've got a medical doctor that's on my board. I am not against doctors. If it wasn't for doctors, all the Christians would be dead because they certainly weren't believing God. I'm not against doctors, but also I do not put doctors on a level where everything that they do is of God and I don't trust them uh, completely. They're just people. They're people. I don't look at them any different than I do a lawyer or a a car salesman or a person that works at the store down there or anybody else. There's doctors that are good and there's doctors that are bad. There's a reason they have the highest malpractice insurance in the world. And you know, this recent meeting that I held, I had five people in a row come up that had uh, blindness, deafness, different things, all related to medical procedures that had been done on them. And they solved this one problem and caused 10 other problems. If you ever look at the advertisements that are on television and they'll say, if you, have you got a headache? Do you have uh, trouble sleeping at night? Well, take this. And then they'll start giving you the side effects. It can cause impotence. It causes you, uh, you, people die from this. It increases your risk of stroke and on and on. And I thought, man, give me my headache back, <laughs> amen, instead of all these terrible things. I'm not against doctors. I'm just saying they're people and they do things right and wrong. But you know what? 
the average Christian will come along and tell you, you just got to submit to all of that, do all of this, even though you've lost your life savings, even though you're, you're poor, you had to quit work, everything's terrible. They would encourage you to do all of that. But then go, go to somebody's meeting where they're going to pray for you, and they'll sit there and make fun of you, and how dare you do that? How dare you do something like this? I'm just using this to illustrate, see, the way that the world thinks. They will tell you to submit to things that will take your life savings, that will cause paralysis and complications, and they have to put all these warnings on it because it is not 100%. It's hit and miss. And they'll just think, oh, that's great wisdom. Do all of this stuff. Let them experiment on you. But then you go to somebody to get prayer, and they'll make fun of you. How dare you do something like that? I bet you that this woman went through this. For 12 years, she had suffered, suffered. She lost everything that she had. She was destitute. And I'm sure all of her friends thought, oh, you're just doing wonderfully. But if they found out that she's going to go listen to Jesus of Nazareth, I bet you that there's a lot of people that thought, how dare her do this? You know, that is just inconsistent. We shouldn't use the Lord as a last resort. There's a lot of people that don't really start trusting God until the doctors have exhausted everything. In a way, you know, I really like it when people come to me and say, it's incurable. The doctor sent me home to die. There's nothing that they can do. I really like that because now they aren't just praying and hoping that God could help the doctors a little bit, but their faith isn't really in God. They're just, they're just adding that to it, thinking, well, it couldn't hurt. That's the way that a lot of people approach it. But I like it when they get to the point that we have exhausted everything. All we can do is trust God. And I say, amen. That's where you should have been in the first place. We ought to get to where we just put our total trust in God and it's not diffused by looking at something else. And this woman had done everything that there was to do. Nothing worked. And so she came behind in the press. It says in verse uh, 27, when she had heard of Jesus. Now, I'm, I'm using all of this to illustrate laws of faith. Here's one of the laws of faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You have to hear the truth before the truth can begin to start releasing power. So one of the laws of God is that you've got to hear. And you know what? This woman could not have been healed if somebody hadn't have told her about Jesus and have told her about the miracles that Jesus was doing and things like this. So hearing is a part of this process. And of course, with us, we not only can hear, but we can read through the Word of God. But you have to, even though you're reading it, you have to have the Holy Spirit speak to you so you hear it in your heart. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so this is one of the laws. If you want to see the faith of God work in your life and healing work, you need to get to hearing God's Word. And I've got to contrast this with you've got to exclusively or primarily hear God's Word in contrast to the negative words of this world. There are some people that read the Word a tiny bit. They know a little bit about it, but the truth is what the doctor says, what the lawyer says, what dear old Aunt Susie went through is more real and more dominant to you than what God's Word says. You've got to reverse that process. You've got to get to the place that regardless of what the doctor says, regardless of what happened to Aunt Susie, it had the same sickness and disease, regardless of all those things, Romans 3, 4 says, let God be true and every man a liar. You have to get to where God's Word is dominant in your life. And you know what? This woman heard. She had the truth of Jesus is God and Jesus is healing people. And Jesus had had power and virtue flow through him before, through his garments and touch people. And all of these things were a part of this miracle. If you don't hear... It says in uh, Romans chapter 10, those verses right in front of verse 17, it says, how can they believe except they hear? How can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? Then it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Part of hearing is somebody, first of all, has to preach. Somebody has to share these truths. 
you have to, first of all, take this knowledge in before the knowledge can set you free. And I'm saying this in love, but there are many of you watching this program that you could take your knowledge of the Word of God and put it in a thimble, and it would be nearly empty. <laughs> I'm not saying that to criticize you, but I'm saying that there's some of you that you could tell me about all of the movies. You could tell me about all the actors. You know all of these things about who's dating who and who's about to break up, and you know all of the idol shows and who has won this and who's done that. You know all of the sports things. You know all of this stuff. You are well-versed in things that I don't even have a clue about, but you don't know the Word of God. And you know what? Those other things aren't going to change your life. They aren't going to set you free, but the Word of God will set you free. Here is a law of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you want faith for healing, get in the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Turn off the other stuff that is taking you away from the Word of God. Get rid of some of your hobbies and start focusing on the Word of God. And then like Psalms 107, verse 20 says, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from all of their destructions. In Proverbs chapter 4, it says that God's Word is life unto those that find it and health unto all of your flesh. And on and on and on you could go. The Word of God, as you study it, will bring faith. It will bring healing. You are going to have to get into the Word of God. And this is just a law that unless you know the truth, you aren't going to get set free. John chapter 8, verse 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's not truth that makes you free. It's the truth you know that makes you free. If you don't know it, it won't make you free. There are many of you that have Bibles, multiple Bibles. You carry a Bible under your arm. You may read a little passage of Scripture here and there, but you don't know what the Word says. And the reason you haven't been set free physically is because you don't know the truth. And it's not just talking about intellectual. It's talking about knowing on a heart level. I've been studying the Word of God day and night for 41 years nearly 42 years. It will be 42 years by the time you see this program. I've been searching and seeking and reading the Word. And did you know what? There is a difference in when I started and I just had read it and I could ha tell you some information. But now I know the Word on a heart level and I'm still learning. There's still things I still only know intellectually and I'm still coming to know the Lord deeper. You've got to know the Word of God. This is a law of God. And there are many of you saying, well, I'm not going to take the time to read and know the Word of God and understand. It's so hard, and you just, for whatever reason, it's like it doesn't take much to dissuade you from reading the Word of God. Well, you know what? God loves you. You can still go to heaven. If you're born again, if you've made Jesus your Lord, you can still go to heaven, and you'll get there quicker because you aren't going to know the Word of God. You aren't going to have the laws of the kingdom working in you and when sickness comes against you, you'll, you'll pray and you'll ask and you'll beg and you'll plead, not understanding that God has given you power and you'll die and you'll go to heaven and I'll meet you there and you'll tell me, you know what, you were right. Amen. And I'll say, I told you I was right. You can still go to heaven. God loves you, but I'm telling you that if you want to get the right results, you are going to have to know the Word of God. It's a law. It's constant. It's consistent. It doesn't change. It doesn't fluctuate. This isn't the way it is just for me and for some other people, but then some people, they just seem to receive from God without this. No, somebody, if it's not you that knows the laws and therefore can make the connection and release the power of God, somebody else has to know the laws and stand there on your behalf and help you. But one way or the other, the power of God does not flow to people who do not know the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God's Word is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. You've got to know the Word of God. That's one of the laws. And you know what? If that is a law, it's consistent, it's for everybody, there's no exceptions. If that really is a law, then right here, most of us don't need to go any further than that to understand why we haven't seen things, because we don't know what the Word says. There are many of you that have watched this program and you have heard me teach that God wants you well. Not just God can heal you, but He wants you well. And you've been taught 
that it's just up to God, and sometimes He puts sickness on you, and you have come to realize that you have just accepted things and without knowing what the Word of God says, and now you realize that you've made a mistake and that this wasn't the truth and that you were deceived in this area, and now you've changed. And already that's going to benefit you, but there are so many other things that I don't have time to go into every single thing. You need to get into God's Word for yourself. You need to let the Holy Spirit start showing you what the Word of God has to say. And you need to start doing this. So today what I've been doing is just trying to emphasize that there are laws that govern how God's power flows. This woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment and the power just flowed out of him before he had time to size her up and evaluate her whether she was worthy or not. The power just flowed because there are laws. You put the laws into effect and boom, the power of God will flow. And the thing that I've been talking about today is that you've got to recognize faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You have to hear God's Word. That's a law. You're either going to have to know God's Word yourself to get free, or you're going to have to go to somebody else who knows God's Word to get free. But somebody somewhere to release the power of God has to know the truth. You shall know the truth, and that's what's going to set you free, the truth that you know. So, brothers and sisters, you need to get into the Word. You know what the appropriate response to today's teaching ought to be? You ought to be saying, praise God, I am going to commit myself to knowing God's Word. And I promise you, if you got to reading it, you know, yes, there's things in here that uh, on first reading of it, it may not make sense, and you may say, I don't understand this. But, you know, the Holy Spirit wrote this book. And the Holy Spirit is with you to guide you into all truth and teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, John 14, 26. And if you would read the Bible with your heart and not just with your head and ask God to show you and interpret it, the Holy Spirit wrote this book. He can interpret it to you. And I could promise you that if you were to respond to this and just say, I'm going to start getting in the Word I am going to know the Word. Yes, there would be some things that you'd have to deal with. You'd probably have to ask some questions. You may have to go get some materials to be able to read and understand some of it. But the benefit is well worth the effort. And as you started doing it, then it would be health to all of your flesh. Proverbs chapter 4, God would send His Word and heal you of all of your diseases. And you would just begin to start seeing things work in your life. I can promise you. I know that there's people watching this program that you're sick. And what you're wanting is me to just wave my hand and all of a sudden everything be normal with you so that you can go back to not knowing God's Word and doing your own thing. And you don't like this, but I'm telling you the truth, that if you would get into God's Word and begin to read it, it would be health to your flesh. It would cause you to be well. God would start showing you things. It's a law of God that faith comes through the knowledge of God's Word. You've got copies of God's Word. Read it. Study it. Put your nose in it and don't come out until you're well. And if you'd do that, you'd be well. I really believe that. God would bring healing to you. There may be some of you that are so far gone, maybe you need to run next door and get somebody else who's been studying the Word to help you. But this is the process that you go through. You know, I'm out of time today, but I will be continuing this on our program tomorrow, so please listen as our announcer gives you some information about how to get these materials. Andrew's complete teaching titled, God Wants You Well, is available in a brand new book for £8.50. Request book number T330 when you contact us. You can also get this teaching in a companion study guide for £17.50. Request study guide T430. The entire series is also available on either CD or DVD as seen on our daily TV program. Each is available for 13 pounds. Request item T1036C for the CDs or item T1036D for the DVDs. Or you can receive the book, study guide, and album as part of the Better Healthcare Package. The package includes your choice of either the CD or DVD series, the new God Wants You Well book, along with the companion study guide, plus Healing Journeys Volume 1 and Volume 2, and the Healing Scripture CD. 
The entire package has a catalog value of 68 pounds, but today we'd like to offer it to you for 50 pounds. To get the better health care package, request item T4505. Be sure to specify CD or DVD. The fourth teaching in the God Wants You Well CD series titled The Laws of Faith is available for three pounds. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this fourth CD free of charge. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922-473-300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44-1922-473-300. Or you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He'll be in Warwickshire, England for the Grace and Faith Family Camp next week, May 28th through the 31st, in Kampala, Uganda for a Gospel Truth Seminar June 3rd and at Worship Harvest Church in Kampala June 4th. He'll also be at the Glory of Christ Church in Kampala June 6th and in Colorado Springs, Colorado for the Summer Family Bible Conference June 28th through July 2nd. I'd like to give you a special invitation to join me on Friday the 28th of May through Monday the 31st of May. This is the bank holiday in the UK and we are having our Grace and Faith Family Camp at Stonelea Park in Warwickshire. And I tell you, I'm excited about this. We're expecting a large turnout. It's going to be four days over this bank holiday. And I will have also Wendell Parr ministering with me. I believe that David Hinton, a six foot seven um, cowboy, is going to be there ministering in music. And it's going to be a great time. There are accommodations, motel accommodations. There's accommodations for caravans, uh, tents, all kinds of things. We have a website for this. They have that address on the screen. You can actually go to that website. It'll give you all kinds of information, booking information. Of course, you can contact our offices. But remember these dates over the bank holiday, May the 28th through the 31st at Stonely Park in Warwick. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. For decades under communism, Russia recruited third world students to St. Petersburg to indoctrinate them in Soviet universities. Today, the students still come, but they no longer learn communism. They learn business, medicine, science, and law. Karis Bible College graduate Carrie Pickett has been there for 10 years, preparing these same professionals to return home with the almost too good to be true news of the gospel. For a complete report on this story, go to awmi.net and click on today's news feature. Invest yourself in Karis Bible College today. <laughs> 